Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to Code Green, one of the longest running shows on this network here. And our veteran showmaster Howard Wig is out and about to basically spread the uh, word of green. And so we're broadcasting live from Honolulu, Hawaii here, and we're driven by the military, never mind, but by tourism as well that much. And we're going to have to talk about the 70,000 and more guest rooms we have on the island and how we can uh, innovate them in the sense of the show. And for that, we got the perfect experts here today from Hawaii Energy Systems. We got Arsina Kaili Hiva. Yeah. And we got Hui Nguyen here. Right. Thank yes. you guys for being here. Thank Much you. appreciated. Thank you, Martin. Thanks for having us. And if we can get the uh, the third slide, because Arsina, you're going to tell us a little bit about your company, right? Right. Yes. So Hawaii Energy Systems actually has been around since 2006. We serve Hawaii, Guam, and Pacific Islands. Um, we just celebrated our 12-year anniversary. We have offices here on Oahu, on the Big Island, on Maui, and Guam. Mm -hmm. uh, we doubled in size in the last two years. So we're up to 49 employees. Um, we are a turnkey electrical and mechanical and low voltage systems contractor in Hawaii and Guam. Um, but more importantly, um, we don't only install, we have a 24 7 service and technical support, which is huge in Hawaii because mm -hmm. a lot of people like to install and then they have a certain um, service on the mainland. So we are mm -hmm. local, we do um, have a 24 7. And then also, we, um, everybody gets us mixed up with Hawaii Energy, but we also are a clean energy ally with Hawaii Energy. So, what that means is that we can do um, energy calculations, savings, and rebates for our clients. Mm -hmm. And that it actually gets added to their project. Mm -hmm. awesome. So, the ROI means better ROIs for our clients. Very good. Very good. Um, and also, one last thing is we just recently this year, we became um, Incom's automated system integrator. Mm -hmm. um, like you mentioned, there's 70,000 of those thermostats and 70%, around 70% is Incom. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge thing for us. And so um, they just came out with a new E7, which we's going to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, the new E7 thermostat. Yeah. yeah. And when we go to the next slide, please, this is, I think, for me, because in my other life, when I'm not the deputy of Howard here, <laughs> I'm an architect and also a coach in architecture up at your age. So that's stuff I can understand, an axonometric diagram here. Yeah. But also at this point, I want to confess, because most people know me from another show, which is my own show, which is tomorrow, every, every Tuesday, and that's called Human Humane Architecture. And behind that is that um, my belief is coming from Germany and having gone through the Midwest and Arizona, that this is the place I believe to be because the thermal comfort of the natural environment is so close to the one where we try to artificially control everywhere else. Then if not here, so I have this little story for when I came here some six years ago, they put me up in the Alamana Hotel and I got into the pretty generic hotel room and I saw that thermostat thing we we're talking about and it said 75 or something like that and I felt like, oh, this is like how it must have felt outside. So I opened that sliding door and, and I said, count me in. And ever since I'm on that mission and have my own self-experiment and I live like that. So, um, and, and initially I thought there would be a conflict of interest between that, but there actually isn't. <laughs> right. Uh, so uh, explain a little bit why, but along the lines also what that diagrams and walk us through the whole hotel room. Uh, sure. Hui, please. Yeah, so the, um, well, thank you for having us on the show. Um, so Martin, when you were in that room, when you slid that, that lanai door open, um, that room was air conditioned to 75 degrees, like you said. Uh, might have been 82 degrees or 84 degrees outside or whatever it was that day. Um, so all that air conditioning air just rushed out of that room, man. Um, you know, it might have been for two minutes, might have been five minutes, or you could have left the room, could have been for six hours. No, it um, was the whole night in my case. Yeah, so yeah, you might Martin. have slept with it open. Yeah, Martin. Yes. <laughs> and so our system here, uh, it's a smart guest room thermostat. Uh, what it does is automatically detects um, it, when someone opens the lanai door and it, uh, it turns off the air conditioning system, so you're not blowing cold air uh, outside, mm -hmm. just air conditioning outside air. Mm -hmm. um, so this diagram that you see here, it's a typical guest room, um, maybe a little bit bigger than um, you know, most of us used to, but just to show all the components, we put in a pretty large guest room here as an example. So 
Um, the central piece of this guest room is the thermostat. So it's on this screen here. It's, uh, it's on the left side of the screen. Um, so um, the, what we're sh showing here is a guest room um, with a separate bedroom and a separate bathroom uh, with a lanai door. Um, mm -hmm. And there's several devices that are, are connected uh, wirelessly to the thermostat here. Mm -hmm. And so when you open up that lanai door, there's a magnetic uh, door switch um, uh, contact that uh, opens when you slide the door open. And uh, that thermostat detects that, and it mm -hmm. shuts off the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. uh, that way you're not wasting energy um, while the door is open. Um, there's several other things on the screen. Um, on the bottom left corner of the screen, um, there's also a front door switch. And mm -hmm. so what that's detecting for is when a guest either enters or uh, leaves uh, the guest room. And so it goes through an algorithm when a, a guest leaves the room. Um, and so as a door switch opens there, it's also a magnetic uh, door sensor. Mm -hmm. um, it, the, the hospitality thermostat that's shown there is scanning for occupancy. Um, on this thermostat, it has a PIR sensor, which is proximity and infrared. Um, when someone leaves, there's a sensor that the um, uh, that thermostat's looking for, and if it doesn't detect movement, it knows the guest has left, and mm -hmm. there's no reason to keep the, the air conditioning cold at 68 degrees or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll do a temperature setback, mm -hmm. set it back to mm -hmm. um, 78 degrees, or which is all configurable, um, and then we'll save a bunch of energy by doing that. You imagine half the hotel guests are out and about, going to restaurants, enjoying beaches, um, no reason to air condition to 72 degrees, and that's part of the strategy. Um, and then when someone enters the room, the motion sensor will automatically pick that up and it will air condition the space. Mm -hmm. um, several other things that are on the screen. Um, there's some remote occupancy sensor in case you have multiple rooms like you do have here. Um, some small guest rooms, you just rely on the one that's on the thermostat. Mm -hmm. um, we can also control plug loads, uh, TVs, uh, light switches, and, um, and uh, little mini bars and refrigerators can all be connected to this as well. So. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, you can actually network all these thermostats together and have them come back to a central server. Um, there's some additional energy savings with that. Um, so when the room is occupied and booked, mm -hmm. we can go into different set points. And when it's not occupied, we can go into a deeper setback. And we could talk about um, a little bit later. I'll have a different slide for that. Um, but what we've seen um, with these systems um, it saves uh, a bunch of energy. Uh, Hawaii Energy, uh, the rebate people, not Hawaii Energy Systems. Um, Hawaii Energy, um, they mm -hmm. rebate uh, this project $75 per guest room. So you can imagine a, you know, uh, a pretty medium-sized hotel has 400 guest rooms. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty big rebate that uh, Hawaii Energy is subsidizing this project because mm -hmm. um, they know it saves energy and it's mm -hmm. a big part of the energy consumption for the state of Hawaii mm -hmm. are these 70,000 guest rooms that we have. Mm -hmm. um, Having the intelligence, uh, it not only saves energy, but it uh, improves the guest ex experience. You've seen some of the other hotel rooms where they have the smart card, where they remove a card to, to engage the uh, mm -hmm. uh, air conditioning system. Mm -hmm. uh, not very fun for the guests to do something like that. This is automatic. You don't have to have mm -hmm. human um, interaction, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. Um, uh, yeah, so it's very smart. Uh, it has artificial intelligence, so there's analytics involved in it mm -hmm. that um, continuously saves energy and makes sure it saves energy that uh, was initially designed for. It has alerts and alarms, um, and it's a very robust system that can save millions and millions of dollars for the state of Hawaii and all the, mm -hmm. and all the uh, hotel rooms that are here. Mm -hmm. No, it sounds like a clever idea. Way back to my temperate uh, upbringing in temperate climate, we designed a school around the millennium that was for disabled children. And uh, it uh, basically, we did the similar thing with heating as we connected uh, uh, the, the windows to a sensor that would sense when a, a kid or a teacher would open the window in the winter time with a good intention to bring the fresh air in, but at the same time, they were wasting the, the energy out of the window, right? And it also shut the furnace off in that case. So it's pretty much the same kind of technology, just in a different climate here. Yeah, right? exactly. And instead of heating, it's uh, air conditioning. And, 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 and I mean, in, in Germany, you will eventually would probably freeze to death in your room, right? But here, <laughs> not so much. So here, it's way more problematic, I guess, that we don't even realize when we are wasting energy, right? right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if, like you're right, in Germany, if 
you'll know when something like that is mm -hmm. going on because there's mm -hmm. um, bigger consequences than energy. But it's uh, to me, energy is a very big problem to have, and mm -hmm. um, yeah. this uh, this tech, type of technology uh, that we apply to guest rooms um, really addresses that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And something that people ignore, a lot of hotel rooms and a lot of um, a lot of uh, facilities ignore is, is the amount of energy that these mm -hmm. guest rooms are, are mm -hmm. consuming. Mm -hmm. And the architect in me cannot get around pointing out another point here, which is basically aesthetics and beauty. Mm -hmm. And uh, for that, maybe Arsina, you want to talk about, we can bring up the next slide, but I think even better if the camera could go to studio because you guys kindly brought a sample. And that's not just a dead sample. This is not like a printed on there. It's actually plugged in. Yeah. So we're knowing what, what a comfortable temperature we have in the room right now, yeah. right? And yeah, you so want to explain is, a little bit that's an interactive, um, um, what, what we see be, behind uh, the, the pretty surface, which I'm pointing out, <laughs> because an architect always also judges by the look. And I have to say there must have been some uh, designer who uh, was not trying to overemphasize this device, but keeping it pretty lean and clean. And sort of the, the display is flush and everything looks like in cool cars of these days, you know, so, uh, but what's probably more, we would talk more about the core values. And so what, what do we see, uh, which buttons do we see and what maybe more importantly, what don't we see and what's all in there in that, in that device? So, you know, you want to address Oh, that. sorry. <laughs> and you can also grab yeah. this one. Oh, yeah, I wasn't one. sure Obviously, if I was going to. You gonna... even brought another one, so we have oh, plenty right. of them. So Obviously, there's different guests from different countries coming to visit. So you know, Fahrenheit or uh, Celsius, oh, I right? I can operate it too. As right. <laughs> See. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, always important. Um, but you know, with with it being smart, hopefully they'll know that ahead of time, right? Mm -hmm. If the, a guest actually requests, then that's something that they can have that already set up mm -hmm. on the different fan speeds. But again, what we don't want is them touching this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and then obviously the temperature is up and down, but most of this would be preset. Mm -hmm. So we want it to look pretty, but we, other than it going down or up, we really don't want them to touch, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. start touching um, mm -hmm. set modes. But mm -hmm. that's pretty much it. It's very simple. We want to keep it simple. It's very user friendly, right? Mm -hmm. um, all the built in, the modes and everything would be on. So there's no reason to turn it off or anything other than that. But that's pretty much it. It's very simple. There's screens that turn on, but again, they're just turning on the temperature or any mode that they're actually getting into, mm -hmm. which the, like I said, the client, I mean, the client, but the guests shouldn't even mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. seeing bothered those, with. right? They shouldn't even be bothered with that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, most guests already do just the lower and hiring of the mm -hmm. temperature, right? Mm -hmm. Or the mm -hmm. fan, the fan. Yeah, so there's, um, yeah, so, uh, like, like Arsene said, the simplicity of it, really architecturally clean looking thermostat. Mm -hmm. um, the horsepower and technology behind it is mm -hmm. pretty advanced. Uh, so mm -hmm. there's a built in uh, temperature sensor, obviously, it's sensing for temperature. Um, there's a built in humidity sensor in here. Um, it comes with standard with every thermostat. So mm -hmm. uh, when the guest checks out, you don't um, need to air condition to uh, temperature anymore, but you still need to keep low humidity levels. And so there's a built in mm -hmm. um, humidity sensor in here that can mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. um, there's a PIR sensor that's kind of right here. It's really mm -hmm. hard to see in the, in the camera, but um, that's proximity infrared sensor. Um, and then the neat thing about this new thermostat, um, so this is the, I don't know if you see this on the camera, so this is the back plate here. Mm -hmm. no, um, this is the well. thermostat here. So when this thermostat, for whatever reason, fails, it gets damaged by a guest or um, someone moving luggage and it damages it, you take this uh, face plate off, um, all the configuration values are still left on this back plate. And so um, uh, maintenance, all they have to do is take this mm -hmm. thermostat off the wall, pop a new one back on, and all the features are saved and the configuration is saved mm -hmm. here. And now you have a brand new working thermostat um, with all the old settings still, mm -hmm. you know, knows which room it's in, knows which sensors it's tied to. You don't have to go through and reprogram this uh, thermostat again. Right. So. Awesome. Um, but now it's actually down. When when a thermostat's down, that mm -hmm. whole room is down. Okay. Yeah. So that's it's you know having to change them out and just yeah. income coming in is down. Mm -hmm. So it's really quick now. Right? Fifteen minutes versus I don't know how many hours to rewire. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. All right. We're gonna hold this thought just for a minute. That we do a little infotainment break here, and then we're gonna be back with Arsina and with Hui to talk about these amazing savings, super smart for our seventy thousand 
guest rooms. Okay, we're back with Arsina and Hui from Hawaii Energy Systems to talk about their super smart device. And before the break, when you were talking about that smartness, that the information is basically in the frame, that reminds me of my car radio that I have in my convertible, so no one steals the thing. You can clip off the front run and put in the glove box. Right. Um, and all the information and even the CD is behind, right? So right. I think it's sort of pulling. Even the display reminds me of the new sort of dashboards in cars where everything is flush and clean and mm -hmm. so um, But um, the thing can do much more yep. and so it can network. You already uh, made an indication about that. So for that, can we get the next slide, please? And you tell us more about what it can all network. Sure. Um, so the... Uh, so the guest room thermostat has a built-in uh, Zigbee radio, um, so it can communicate um, to each thermostat that, to the adjacent room, mm -hmm. and that builds a network that goes back to a central uh, router. So that central router can come back down to a server. Um, that's kind of what you're seeing in this slide here is a server. Um, so that server brings in all kinds of information. Um, the um, the sensors that are that are communicating to the thermostats, they're, a lot of them are battery powered. So it'll tell you um, which uh, systems have a uh, battery that's out or running low. Um, so that's, that's the worst thing with some of these smart thermostats. And when you have a battery that goes out and no one's really watching it, um, you end up not having a very smart thermostat if, if your sensors aren't working. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so that's one of the things um, the analytics can do for you. Um, so kind of the main screen that's up on front, um, you see some, like a high-rise building, a hotel. There's some green rooms, some red rooms, some orange rooms, some yellow rooms. So all those have different color codes. Um, so a red room might be a room that's having trouble keeping up with air conditioning. It could be a broken air conditioning system. It could mm -hmm. be a filter that needs to be changed. Um, so all that information can be trended and brought to a uh, attention to a, a facility owner or a mm -hmm. building manager. Um, so then you start repairing things and uh, maintaining the system. Um, and then there's all kinds of different analytics this can do. It's a little bit advanced. Uh, so this is uh, sensing uh, whether the guest is, you know, how often the guest is leaving, how often the guest is in the room, and for how many hours. Are they waking up in the middle of the night every mm -hmm. night? Um, all that information is available now um, mm -hmm. using, you know, big data, right? We're talking mm -hmm. about big data and mm -hmm. analytics behind it. So um, this can tell you that, you know, a certain room, the guest is waking up every day at 2 a.m. And, you, you know, for whatever reason, every day at Thursday on a 2 a.m. that that person wakes up and you go back and find out why that's happening. It might be a laundry machine that kicks up at 2 a.m. every day and is waking up the guests. And so mm -hmm. that type of, type of analytics um, really increases the value of just a smart guest from thermostat mm -hmm. everywhere. It saves energy. Mm -hmm. Now you're doing analytics and finding wow. out some problem spots and really improving the, yeah. the guest comfort. You, you explained this to me in a very sort of simple and easy to understand way that you said maintenance was usually whenever we you know human beings think we're smart we, we invent technology it's going to break at some point right so mm -hmm. mostly we recognize that when it's already broken so we call this reactive maintenance right. we say oh something with our car or it breaks down that we got to go to the shop for a little smarter we do basically proactive maintenance mm -hmm. which is i do my service intervals right mm -hmm. But they might not, you know, be timely enough as well because who knows when the timing chain is going to break? You know, that might be between the intervals. 
So your system is once again with cars where you can sort of plug in and have the electronics and the, the sensors basically figure out, you know, which parts are at what point and, and whatnot, right? Right. So, yeah, I would call that like a third level of maintenance, right? So you mm -hmm. have your reactive maintenance, which is my brakes are, are broken. I need to fix my brakes. Right. You know, so you're not driving for two weeks while mm -hmm. you have that scheduled. Uh, preventive maintenance, like you said, it's, you know, you check your oil every 3,000 miles and that might be good enough, it might be too much, but you're preventing it from breaking. Mm -hmm. um, the third level of maintenance uh, that you're referring to, I like to call predictive maintenance, right? Mm -hmm. So now you're not changing your you know, air filter every 10,000 miles like they suggest. Mm -hmm. You're doing it when you need it, right? Mm -hmm. It might be 7,000 miles, it might be 12,000 miles. So mm -hmm. um, the tip, type of analytics this device is collecting gives you that. It tells you your filter is need to be replaced mm -hmm. or your air conditioning system needs to be maintained or something's wrong with the room door switch or whatever it is. Um, it takes you to another level of maintenance that um, now you're predicting failures uh, mm -hmm. before they happen and not over uh, doing maintenance, not I guess. over or under. Right? Yeah. And that is also being very resourceful, right? right? Because you're not wasting intervals and throwing out parts that could easily, you know, exactly be in there and, and stay for a little longer. Mm -hmm. So that's... That's pretty clever. Yeah, right? yeah. So that's get smarter and smarter. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> with all this data, because this this is collecting all that data. I mean, mm -hmm. we should do something with that data, right? It's a little you know. mastermind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's smarter than the people in the in the it space at times. Yeah. Right? So it's it's like we were talking about earlier. There's really not many functions that guests can have. You just you know, mm -hmm. it's detecting all this for you. Um, there's a lot of future built into this. It's it's future proof. We talked about it a little bit earlier um, before the show. It has a Bluetooth beacon inside of it, so um, uh, you can interact with your thermostat with your phone. Um, mm -hmm. there's, uh, there's things coming out with Alexa, so now you can speak to your thermostat. You can order, you know, mm -hmm. pizza or yeah. have guests um, reservations, reservations or, you know, yeah. yeah, you need to bring... We have her sitting here, so we might... Yeah, so you have Alexa that. there. Yeah. And so um, there's Alexa in integration. Mm -hmm. um, they currently have door lock integration, so you mm -hmm. can... Um, you know, those apps that open uh, hotel guest rooms that mm -hmm. it can integrate with this as well. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of that's already been used today. Some of that is um, built into this already for the future mm -hmm. um, is, is that Bluetooth function. Mm -hmm. um, so wow. um, amazing, amazing. And since we were mouth watering the audience <laughs> with that spectacular, catchy title of these super savings, right? Probably mm -hmm. the audience wants to know what are we talking about quantitatively, right? Sure. And so mm -hmm. do we want to maybe bring up the concluding and final slide for that? <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> but go in more depth of what all these dollars mean and where they come from. Sure. Um, so the strategy we talked about where um, we have occupant sensors and front door sensors and lanai door sensors, um, all those things amounts to reducing energy costs by turning off air conditioning systems. So what does that amount to? Um, typically 15 to 25% per room. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's just the, the amount of energy consumed in that room. So that's the lighting, that's the air conditioning system. Um, and then property-wide, um, there's a chiller usually, a, air conditioning, a central air conditioning system. And that, um, that's 10% property-wide. So you can imagine, you know, a lot of the properties we've worked with, they have energy bills upwards of four, five, six million dollars a year. Um, saving 10%, that's not a small amount of money. Um, uh -huh. So we're talking about a product with 70,000 guest rooms in Hawaii that can save millions and millions of dollars a year for the state of Hawaii. And that's, mm -hmm. a lot of that's from HECO, that's, uh, you know, yeah. foreign oil and all yeah. kinds of things that yeah. come along yeah. with that. So a lot of environmental impact as well. So we're looking at about two, year, two to three year payback mm -hmm. for a product like this. And in all fairness, and also sort of in favor of your product, you said um, about more than half of the hotel rooms are already equipped with the technology, but an older version, right? But you also said there is a problem with these ones, right? Do you want to address that? Yeah, so um, yeah, so this, this is the, uh, the E7 that we're looking at here, and there's a couple other varieties that are out there. Um, um, about half the hotel guest rooms, or hotel uh, rooms already have something like this. It's a smart guest room thermostat. Um, what we've seen is um, a lot of these thermostats are not properly maintained. Mm -hmm. um, so let, we have batteries for sensors that don't work anymore. Um, uh, and so um, they have a lot of these, the older ones that you saw on the previous slide, 
um, there's an aux sensor that's in there that's been pushed in. Uh, people think it's a camera or something, they damage it. And so, um, and so if that doesn't work anymore, you're not detecting for occupancy. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it assumes that it's occupied if it's damaged. Mm -hmm. And so without knowing all that data we talked about earlier, um, mm -hmm. a lot of these smart thermostats are not smart anymore. They're just running like a regular old thermostat running all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a big, um, big uh, energy consumers Definitely. thermostats aren't working correctly. Definitely. And I'm sure this little appetizer wasn't enough for many people who want to know more and who want to see more. There's a current uh, very attractive chance where people can meet you guys again over the next couple of days. Yeah. Where and when is that? Yes, Asina? it's at the um, <laughs> yeah, so we're, mm -hmm. Wednesday, um, was March 7th and 8th. Um, we'll be there all day. I think it's 9. I didn't realize. Yeah, so we, it's uh, at the Hawaii, Hawaii oh. Building Facilities and Property Management Expo. It's, mm -hmm. it's on this week. It's on the 7th and 8th. Uh, so that's Wednesday and Thursday, yeah, I believe. Yeah, it is on Wednesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday and Thursday. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we will be there. We'll have a booth. We'll be displaying this along with some of the other technologies that we have. We're uh, system integrators, and so our primary role is applying a technology in ways to save energy and this is one of the technologies we have and we have we'll have several others on display so mm -hmm. RC and I will both be at the booth mm -hmm. um, this week so come join us come see yes, us come check <laughs> us out <laughs> definitely so thank you for getting to the end of the show thank you so much for having been here I mean th this is refreshing until Martin gets his vision done that everyone lives easy breezy and, <laughs> and you guys maybe like BP is leading in PV because by the point there is no oil anymore they want to just flip over in the, in the switch and want to be leading so maybe you guys go into other bioclimatic devices in the future and use screens and stuff like that and until then <laughs> you contribute uh, in the notion of Howard's show here, here and now, let's do it um, mm -hmm. and equip all the rooms with that. And then Martin can have his easy breezy and it shuts off. It's just smart. <laughs> because in what is it, 2045, we promise to be off the grid, right? That's right. correct. And this right. is a great step towards that. For sure. That is correct. Right. Okay, thank, thank you guys you. so much. <laughs> it was a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having us. And thank you. Thanks for your being with us on that mission of Code Green. And so I'll see you guys when Howard is back next week. Tune in again on Monday at 3 p.m. here for Code Green. And until then, stay as green as Howard and Arsina and Hui. Bye. <laughs>